Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday. Um, coming into our second week of our Munch and Move activities again and thought we would start our day with another fantastic action dancing song which would have come out on the music disc last week. So let's get into it. <laughs> Legs, if you can do it on one. Super me, I ate my broccoli for tea. Now I have extra energy to run really fast. Run, run on the ground. If you're inside, you can jump on the spot. Run on the ground. Run over here. Run over here. Running is good to get you nice and warm on a cold morning. DVD or your CD from last week. Okay, um, what I want to do as well, moving on from last week, is um, some of the veggie uh, veggie cards that we got that are used for memory last week. Well, another game that you can play with them, which um, you'll be able to have a go at this week, is uh, like called Celebrity Heads. So this game is all about guessing what vegetable you might be. So for example, and obviously um, as you're taking part in this, you wouldn't know which card you pick up, so it'd be a mystery card. And you normally either put it in a headband or you can just hold it up above your head so you won't know what vegetable, fruit or vegetable you have. And then you need to ask some questions. So it might be, am I a green vegetable? And ideally you would have a few people in line. So if I said, am I a green vegetable? And the answer is no, then the next person will get a turn and they'd also have a turn at asking a question and guessing what vegetable they are. If you get the answer correct, so perhaps I might have asked, do I grow under the ground? And for this one, that's a yes. So I'd get to ask another question. Okay, um, do I have green on me? And then... Again, that's a yes, so you continue. Every time you get a yes, you get to ask another question. Um, if you ask a question and it's a no, the next person gets to have a turn. And eventually you'll ask enough questions that we'll be able to work out what your vegetable is. So for this one was obviously the carrot. What I might do is I'll pick a different one. And I would say, am I a green vegetable? Which is a no, okay. Um, do I grow under the ground? That's also a no, so I'd wait for my next turn. And then I might say, um, do I have lots of little parts on me? And that would be a yes. And we already know that I'm not green, so am I orange? That's a no, so you'd have to stop and think. And what other vegetables might I be if I'm not green and I'm not orange? I could say, am I a round vegetable? again for this one would be a no but you could ask am I a long vegetable or do I am I spicy like there's lots of different ways thinking of descripting you know colors shapes sizes where they grow um, you know uses so would you use me in a stir fry would you put me in a salad so I guess, um, you know, role modeling those questions as well. The more we think about 
vegetables and the, the different ways they can be used, sort of the more they become part of our daily routine. And the good part about this is, um, so once you've asked your questions and you've gone, okay, so am I corn? And for this one, the answer is yes, excellent. So then it would be my turn to have someone sit down and I would get to be able to pick a vegetable for someone to have a turn. But these are handy little cards because as we saw last week, you can use them for memory. Um, they could be used for celebrity heads. If you had a couple of sets, so, um, you could use them like cards. You could play Snap or you could play Go Fish if you had, you know, a few more. So again, getting the children to be looking at them and thinking colours, shapes, all those sorts of things are really fantastic. And they're lots of fun. Um, you know, your littlies might get to learn a few more vegetables that they're not overly familiar with. And the bigger kids are fantastic at learning the rules to games and making sure you stick to them. So they'll, um, we'll have the link available for those cards. They're just off one of the um, free flash card sites, which we had the link up earlier, but I can provide the link to that. So um, yeah, that's a nice, quick, easy one that you can sort of get across, going across all the ages. Um, and yeah, worst case, again, print out another set, cut them out and make a little book at home where the children can either, you know, match them up. Maybe they might like to pair up all the yellow vegetables and put them on one page and do all the red ones, all the green ones. They might like to pick a few out and write a story about the vegetables or, you know, just pick out the ones they like and, and pop them in there and, and colour around them and decorate them. So lots of options you can use, um, yeah, with the vegetable cards. Uh, today's, um, I suppose, physical activity or something that's a little bit more exciting is um, we're going to do some scarf games. So scarves don't have to be purchased, bought, beautiful scarves. They're always lovely if they are, but if you've got old fabric, you know, an old pillowcase, an old sheet that might have lived its last um, legs, or in our case, we've got um, some hankies. And nice clean handkerchief, nice and big man size. That is perfect size for doing scarves. are really really fantastic because you can get together with your child and make the story up together follow your child's lead if they're a bit older or if not you become the running narrative so you direct them to where they want to look at and what that might mean so uh, today's book is called bow wow meow and i'll go through and, and again give another example of what conversational reading might look like or you know how how it looks like to me and you do, so you direct the children's eye, you go, wow, that's, so let's have a look at this picture. I wonder what's going on. What can we see? It's a paintbrush. You can see they look like a couple of tails there. Some paw prints. I wonder what's going to be in this book. Let's find out. First page. Is that a dog? Is that a tin? How's he feeling? How do you think he's feeling? He looks pretty happy, doesn't he? I can tell he's smiling. He's got his tail up. He's a bit cute. Do we have a dog? What's our dog 
dog's name? If we don't have a dog, what might we name a dog? So just having all those conversations. So anyway, all right. So dog. Next page. <gasps> Bow. The dog's barking at the tin. Oh, and now he's knocked it over. What's coming out of the tin? Looks like yellow. Yellow paint, maybe. Let's have a look. Oh, dear. What's going to happen next? Oh, my goodness. Have a look. He's knocked the tin over and he's sliding and running through the paint. Let's have a look. How's he feeling? He's got his tongue out. He's got his tail up. I think he's still pretty happy. He seems pretty happy with this. Oh, look. And he's got a big smile. And look who he's come across. He's come across a sleepy cat who's sleeping on some more tins by the looks. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. I think he scared the cat. Meow! And she's jumped up and she's knocked some more tins. Red paint this time. Yellow dog. I think there's about to be a red cat. Oh, dear. Let's have a look. How is that cat feeling? He doesn't have his tail up. He's got his tail out and frizzy. He looks a bit angry. And how's the dog feeling? Still happy? Well, I don't know, he looks a little bit nervous. Well, yellow paint, red paint, uh oh. Oh dear, the cat was angry. Look, he's attacked the dog and they're fighting. They're rolling around. And look, we've got the yellow paint and the red paint all mixing together. Kind of like our butterfly paintings from last week. Yesterday, when we did our butterfly paintings, we mix the colours together. Well, that's what's happening here. Uh oh. Oh, and they're still going and they're mixing and they're churning, and the colour's changing, hasn't it? So, this was lots of yellow and red, and now they're rolling around more. Getting a third colour in here. It's a great opportunity to talk about colour mixing. What happens when you mix colours? What colour do you think this is going to turn out to be? Let's see what happens next. Oh, wow. So now the dog is chasing the cat and they're not yellow and red anymore, they're orange. So yellow and red together must make orange. The dog's chasing the cat. What's gonna happen next? Uh-oh. Can we see lovely lady here getting ready? I think she actually owns the paint. She's getting ready to do a painting. And do you think she's noticed who's in the background? Uh-oh. Oh dear. Dog chasing cat has knocked into the lady. We've now got orange paint up here. Her black paint has gone everywhere. Oh no, how is she feeling? Woo! The cat and dog are at it again. Spinning around in circles. How do you think the lady's feeling? She looks a bit puzzled. What happened? Where did this come from? The paint's over the back there. Oh, what has happened now? Have a look at the colours again. The black paint from over here has been knocked. And they've changed colour again. Cat and dog. Poor lady's very colourful too. She's copped a share as well. And some for the board. Wow, she says. Have a look at that fantastic swirly artwork from a cat and dog running around and have a look. How do cat and dog feel? Tail is up, big smile. I think they're very proud of their work. How fantastic. And again, if you've got an older child, they'll be able to give you the words and the narration. For your younger children, it's all about you sitting with them and you helping them out. If the children, if your little bubbies are pointing to the cat or the dog or pointing to the lady only, talk about those bits. Talk about what your child is interested in. It doesn't need to be um, prescriptive. It doesn't need to be anything huge or massive or long. But if they're enjoying it, if they're interested, it's all about that. The early literacy is about getting interested in books, how books work, opening, closing, words, turning from left to right, all of those things. It doesn't need to be a massive thing. They might not even go through the whole book. Might only be a few pages this time. They might come back again in an hour and have a look at another couple of pages. Follow your child's lead on that one. Um, and it's always fantastic. 
but uh, bow, meow, wow will be included in our links and our packs. Um, so yeah, absolutely get your copy. If you've got an older child, maybe even scribe down what they say. I can come back to it and, and revisit it again next time. But uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you tomorrow for a few more fun home activities. Thank you.